what is good? Sorry, I'm yelling at you. Uh, I just had an interview with my boy, Leo. He started his own podcast. I lived with him in college. He's one of my best friends. It was an amazing podcast. Actually, one of my favorite I've ever been a part of. It was so many ideas. It was kind of crazy because there's a lot of ideas I wanted to share myself, but he asked amazing questions. So it was kind of the podcast I wanted to make, but he facilitated it and it was just amazing. His podcast is called Risk with Confidence. This is his podcast, but I'm just posting it on mine because it was such a great interview and I'm sharing the love and it was just such good information. And uh, yeah, help him out. Show, show him some love on his podcast. He's all about business. You could check out his first episode to know more about his what his podcast is about, but I'm looking forward to him doing a lot more. I was his first interview and I'm honored to be his first interview and it went so well that I'm just so excited to see what he does in the future and I'm definitely a huge fan, huge supporter. So I hope you guys enjoy Still Spinning Podcast 72, I believe this is, raising our consciousness, enjoying life to the most, to the max, and uh, that's it. I hope you guys like this one. Thank you all for listening. It's been growing a little bit and I really appreciate I'm having so much fun doing it and I'm getting great feedback. So thank you so much and just enjoy more. I don't really know what else to say. Just enjoy this episode. Let me know what you thought of it and uh, have a lot of guests coming on soon and a lot more things to talk about. Everything I do, I want to share. So I'm hoping to keep this podcast more frequent like it's been doing. Hopefully every Tuesday, at least once a week, you get the point. All right. Enjoy. Hey, yo, I'm easily fascinated. I'm feeling so creative. It's your boy Stevie. I'm a planet Earth native. I'm enjoying all the moments because it's such a thrill living. And I'm not sure if you notice. Listen up, we're still spinning. Uh. Steven, how's it going, my brother? Yeah, everything is great, man. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me on your podcast, man. Glad to have it Dude, going. I'm excited. This is, uh, you're my first interview for my podcast. And so, apologies in advance if I don't sound too professional but i am working in progress man yes i was about to say the same thing it's all practice i'm still trying to learn it myself so what's good man it's sunday uh what you got planned for today today um this i was very excited for this so i'm just excited to uh, have a little conversation um i love doing these podcasts and i also just going to the gym after this uh and then later after that probably make a video i make youtube videos of my dunking so i'll probably make a little dunk vlog about that and uh, yeah, I might actually record a solo podcast myself of me just ranting on something interesting and watch some documentaries this weekend and new books and things like that. So I might get on the mic myself for my own podcast. So just for the people to get to know you, I guess for the people who don't know you, you have quite a bit of an audience and different platforms. So what what is what is Steven? Sure. Who, who uh, is Steven? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, my main platform is probably my YouTube. Uh, I started that back in 2011. Uh, I had a dream of dunking ever since I was a little kid. And then I saw people on YouTube that were my height, um, that went from touching the rim to dunking, really inspired me, and that made me believe it was possible. And just kind of started a video, making videos to document. Uh, I think I've told you the story a million times, but um, I'm trying to condense it because it's really long. But uh basically started making videos to try to document my progress just so I could kind of see how I'm doing. I could look back on the days where I couldn't do it because I really believed I could. And then it would be awesome to catch my first dunk on tape. So I did that. And um, once I did that, when, I realized that my... Go ahead. When was your first dunk? So that was that was uh, about a year in, I think. I was 19. I'm 26 now. Now, let's keep in mind you're 5'10". Yes. 510 and it um it's something i was actually i might actually be starting a book i didn't tell you this actually because let me get i'll get back to the little book it's about it's about this whole dunk life type thing but um basically i was trying to dunk and i would watch people on on youtube if you're a dunk fan if you don't know dunking there's a whole like dunking community out there now and one of those people is uh, Jordan Kilgannon he's been in the all-star game he's been in different contests but also he was just like inventor of dunks kind of like taking dunking to another level inventing dunks but the, this guy Andy Nicholson was my height he was the guy that was went from touching the rim to dunking at my height that really inspired me and when I was training to dunk trying to get my first dunk and even when I did I was on YouTube asking a million questions how do I do this how do I jump higher watching these people that jumped higher than me asking what their training is all all the time like waiting every moment on their response and sometimes it'd be weeks because they had a lot of comments people weren't as interactive there wasn't even instagram yet and um so then when i got my first dunk and i was still training i was started to get those questions because i went from dunking to maybe two hand dunks windmills and uh then i realized that uh nobody's really 
showing what they do day to day. They would kind of show a video of them dunking and then weeks later show them jumping higher or a month later showing them landing a new trick and people watching were impressed, but they were, they were getting inspired, but they didn't know what happened in between. So that's kind of what inspired me. And also it was at the time Casey Neistat, who's a huge YouTube vlogger, was getting big and I thought vlogging was perfect for that. That's awesome. And so I don't know much about dunking. Um, how does that passion actually get started? Because I know you played a little bit of football in high school and right. as a younger kid. And I guess you played a little bit of basketball. But how, how does your passion get to the point of that little niche of yes. dunking? So that is uh, a great question because it's, it's basically who I am. And when I think back, and I've done this a lot because just the point of my life, I think about who I am a lot. And it's actually um, built up from my life story as a kid growing up. So growing up, I was always energetic. I mean, I loved playing sports, but I was always, I was always uh, short. That was a big part of it. Like whenever I played sports, I was always the shortest one. But that gave me um, like a short complex of like trying to be the best. So whenever I was like playing sports, I was shortest, but I wanted to be the fastest because that's what I could do. Or I wanted to be the best at playing basketball or like catch the best playing football just always wanted to, I was very competitive uh, and being short it kind of made me feel like the underdog so I always wanted to prove people wrong um, and then also being short I always loved touching things because that was like the best way I could kind of stand out because like if there was even just like the door frame I remember in elementary school like just being able to touch that like there was yeah. kids my height or like taller that wouldn't even think to do it but I would run and try to touch that and being short it made me like want to like jump and touch things that were looked impossible sort of that's awesome man uh, yeah. You mentioned a little bit about your energy, and I've got to say you're probably <laughs> uh, the person who has the most energy out of anybody I know, and I've always wondered, how do you have so much energy? I mean, I don't think I have ever seen you tired once, and <laughs> you probably do uh, things like three times than I do. You go to the gym yeah. and spend three hours at the gym, and then <laughs> you know you spend time vlogging and doing all these things. What What is the energy? Where is it coming from? How do you get it? So, um, as a kid, it was always just kind of almost like ADD, just like loving to do crazy things and like making my friends laugh. I was always just like, I, I always loved making my friends laugh. So when I would like have that energy burst, I think that was like little thinking like really deep, that like reward system of making people laugh, like felt good. Um, and just playing sports. I always, I always played a lot of sports. So I think my energy kind of built from there. Um, but I also just loved the energy from a young kid. Like I loved running and I loved playing and I loved uh, making people laugh and doing things like that. So I always loved it. Um, and then when I had these goals of making the YouTube and I started to uh, see some sort of a path of like becoming who I am and learning about myself a lot and having these big goals that I see are would not only make my life um almost like a dream, like doing things that I love and inspiring people. And like, it just felt so aligned that it, that fills me with energy as well. So having that, um, vision of what I want to do is really inspiring to me. It fills me with energy to see other people getting, uh, inspired to do things. So that's one uh, aspect of the energy. But then as I was doing all this YouTube and lurking up how to make a podcast and listening to other podcasts that are super inspiring, um, I started to learn, about nutrition and my body and sleep and how important all these things are. So that is a huge factor. I, every I, every time I talk to somebody in their um, sort of lacking energy or lacking motivation, I always or they're in a different mood, like a poor mood. The the foundation is always like sleep, eating right, and moving your body a little bit because. I've also learned that a lot of it is you think you have energy and then you do those things. Like you have energy and then you eat right because you have effort to like make that meal that's healthy instead of that takes a little more time or get those things done so you could sleep earlier or like or you have energy and then you go to the gym. But a lot of times it's reverse. It's a lot of times it's you you do something first. Like for example, I'm I'm tired, but if I get up and start moving my body, the energy builds. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I know you've been doing quite a bit of, I guess, journaling, I would say. Yes. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about that. It, it's, it's, uh, it seems like it's something every entrepreneur and athlete and, and people are doing these days. And it's definitely something I want to get into. I think it can really help me with my daily routines. So just explain to me kind of what do you do to journal and what are you documenting and how do you keep progress? Uh, what do you write sure. it down by hand? Do you have an app? Dude, I have I've actually wanted to tell you this. I'm glad we're getting into it now, so it's documented because I'm gonna share it with mine. 
my audience, but um, I actually learned some really good tips recently. Um, uh, I'm doing life coaching training, as you know, which we can get into as well, like how I got to there. I think that was one of the things you wanted to ask me about. But um, yeah. I have these mentors that are like coaching and training me about life coaching, and they're they're like so far advanced they've been doing life coaching for a while and the, the training program i'm in is called inlp and i forget what the i is but it's i think it's institute but it's neuro linguistic programming so it's all it's like psychology it's all about how your brain works it's all about how your emotions work so i'm learning so much about my mind and all those different things um and like you said journaling was one of those practices i was i'm um, been terrible at meaning I, I i haven't felt the benefits i i don't know why i'm doing it i'm trying to learn but i my coach he gave me really good advice that's helped me tremendously and this was just last week um so the problem i was having which i brought up to him because our classes are very interactive and we just talk a lot and we can kind of uh talk about these type of things because they're very relevant but what i was doing is the power of visualization i'm a uh, very uh big proponent of because when you could see it in your mind, it makes it real. And I've had experiences in the dunk world and my training is like whenever you're uh, able to see it, you can kind of uh, see yourself doing it. it. It changes your body's chemistry. It allows those uh, different pathways to be carved to start achieving that. So if you, if you visualize something you want to achieve, now your brain's in a different state and starts thinking of different ways to get there. That's what I believe. And I've, there's like science behind it and books that I've read. Um, but Anyway, so I was trying to visualize at night before I go to sleep because I learned that going when you go to sleep and before, when you wake up, it's those are like the best times to do visualization or meditation because your brain is like going into those more subconscious levels quicker. And that's where you want the visualization to get into. So it's in your subconscious, which is freaking uh, does it without you thinking. So I was trying to do the visualization at night. For example, say I was trying to visualize landing a new dunk or for life coaching, landing new clients. And I was visualizing it sort of like meditatively and it would get me excited because I would picture myself like living a great life, like landing a dunk and I would get hype and it was like making me not fall asleep because I'd get excited. Yeah. So I was like, this is, this is, I can't, I can't visualize at night, but I want to because I want to sleep on it. So I, I brought it up to my coach and he mentioned to me, um, well, one thing you should do is write it out. And I was like, okay, that's really interesting. I was like, do you use a computer or do you use paper? Uh, he said definitely paper and he gave me all these reasons why and I'm, I'll tell you now it's really great So I was using computer because my handwriting is terrible and with the computer as you know I have too many thoughts the computer I can type really fast and I can get I felt like I can get all my thoughts out right. um, And but as I don't know if you know but the, like the blue light, you know You'd want to turn your electronics off. It's not it's not healthy for trying to get to sleep so one Pretty obvious one is just you want to get away from electronics when you're trying to get to sleep. It helps like slowly calm you down and get you away from that blue light so you can sleep sooner. Um, but the other thing he said that was really, really fascinating was that your hand is very connected to your, your mind, like your brain and your unconscious. So when you like he told me about this study, this is kind of weird. I'm hopefully I can explain it well. But if you're holding a pendulum and you close your eyes, like say I tell, I tell you to hold this pendulum that you can just like, like shake in your hand and I tell you to close your eyes and just repeat the word yes in your head, the pendulum will move a direction, like maybe up and back, like forward and back, right? And then if I say, now, now think of the word no, the pendulum will change direction without you even knowing, you just think you're spinning it the same way. Right. But it just shows you that your hand is connected to what you're thinking. It has different pathways for different things that you're thinking. Um, so since it's so connected to your, your brain, when you write and you're writing these things in your journal, it's very connected. So the way he explained it was if you're writing, um, for example, if I'm writing my journal of visualization, instead of just visualizing and say today, like act like I already achieved the goal. Like today I landed this new dunk and it's incredible. I've been trying to land this for three months or six months and you kind of write out your emotions because you're writing it your brain kind of sees that experience as almost real so it's a very powerful visualization and then on top of it you're getting all that stuff out of your head onto paper so it's not in your head anymore so that way you get a sense of accomplishment and there's actually more i don't know if you want to hear a little bit more about the journaling techniques that are so he explained i'm actually i'm just i'm interested so for example let's say Journaling, I think, to me is trying to uh, make a goal happen, right? Come true. Yes. So, I'm guessing, let's say, 
and this is probably a bad example, but if your goal is to dunk and have one of the, I don't know, greatest dunks ever, mm -hmm. right? Um, what are you, are you journaling every night about that specific goal? Uh, are you journaling about uh, the workouts you did or um, help me understand what you are actually tracking? Right. Okay. So yeah, that's a good point. So I kind of went over, I just, I always jump ahead. So what I was talking about was a tech, one of the techniques of journaling called future pacing. So that was kind of like picking a future event and kind of visualizing it so you can feel those emotions now and you could sleep on it so you could um, be in that state now and then sleep on it and wake up in that state as if you achieved it, which I, there's a lot of benefits to. But there's, and the reason why I do future pacing at night is because you're about to go to sleep and when you sleep, your brain is problem solving over and over and over. So if you journal about the day you just had, it's gonna, it's gonna problem solve on the things you already accomplished. So it's gonna just reinforce those things. That goes back to the other thing we were talking about with the energy is a lot of people get stuck in a rut as they say because they're thinking of things that already happened and trying to fix what happened. Like, why, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong here? How did today go? And they're gonna problem solve the things that are already in the past and they're gonna just keep doing the same patterns. So the future pacing is the, the technique I choose to do at night because I want to make progress. But um, I was journaling uh, about things that I was, uh, like every day, at one point I was journaling every night just trying to write down how the day went and what I learned and things like that. And I think there's benefit to that, but I just kind of developed a more habit of the future pacing, so I'm not really sure if I'm gonna go back to that uh, journaling of how the day went just because I think there's more benefits to the like the day's already over you know it's already there's I'm not going to go back and look at those things right. that I've it, it might be good just kind of like in the future just to kind of see how I was doing but um, I don't know it's just more about the future pacing that I think is a lot more beneficial but when it comes to the the thing that you asked which was like landing that a great dunk and what I'm doing to document it is so I think when it comes to journaling, I'm only focused on the kind of visualization part. I'm not really focused on uh, mapping out my workouts. I'll do that in the morning and I'll do that in, in that sp specific day in a different task. But for nighttime, like before bed journaling, um, I wouldn't do like my problem solving. I'll do more of my visualization because you want to uh. turn off that problem solving brain. So like at night, I'll do like, I'll, today I landed the dunk, I just can't believe it. Like I don't always do the same thing every night. Like I, I don't know if I'll just re repetitive, repetitively talk about that dunk, but um, so I it's definitely- more, It's more designed to keep you kind of motivated and kind of, you know, keep you going, so. Yeah. Okay. So like the visualization for me is kind of, it's almost like a little bit of a fantasy and what, hel what helps me, what I feel is like, for example, another thing I want to do is like stand up comedy at one point, right? Nowhere near it. It's just kind of like a dream of mine. So I'll, I'll fantasize in my little journal before I sleep. Like today I did my first show. It went, it went great or even if it went bad, but I enjoyed doing it and I had a lot of fun. I learned about this. And by the thing of me writing, which I wanted to get into too, is that as I'm writing this, it's fun to think about. And since I'm writing it, it's like connected to my brain, like I was mentioning, that I start to feel as if I'm having that experience. Like right now, if you just like think about how great it would be if this podcast blew up, right? Like if you're fantasizing like, wow, I've been doing my podcast for a year now. I reached this many subscribers. I've reached this many people. I'm going to have this guy, like maybe a dream guest come on your podcast, be like, and you write that out you feel excited and you feel good about it. And you could say like, wow, today is amazing. I can't believe how great it is. And it all leads to gratitude. And then you're going to sleep with that gratitude and you just feel so good. Like it literally right. changes the way your emotions are. So touching on the concept of visualization, um, I know we both kind of read the Think and Grow Rich book at the mm -hmm. same time and we were going back and forth yeah. like crazy. <laughs> like, man, this is so motivating. And like, there's mm -hmm. just like so much uh, to do after reading the book or as you're reading the book sometimes you have to like pause and like start you know doing some of the things that the book kind of tells you to do um, and and that's so true it worked for me as well I think you know one of my biggest dreams was to own a business and get out of the the nine eight to five or nine to five mm -hmm. environment and you know for three years I was constantly thinking about like I know it's gonna happen I just gotta mm -hmm. prepare myself for that moment and 
you know, j- having that pattern of thought helped me become a more positive person because I used to be somewhat on the negative side, you know, like, oh, right. that's never going to happen, this and that. But once I realized what I wanted to do and I kept listening to, you know, podcasts and reading all these books, he helped me become more motivated and he helped that, that, um, this, uh, like that vision, um, yes. you know, come true. So I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I think that I definitely need to, uh, do some journaling as well. Uh, cause obviously you're gonna I, like have, it. I have, I have tons of <laughs> dreams and aspirations. And- Dude. So the thing about the journaling is like, I just started like the actual future pacing like a week ago. I still have trouble. And that's one thing I, I've learned about all these type of things. It's not just like you pick up a journal, you do it, and you, you're a master at it. It's all like a practice. And sometimes that journal is like, I try to future pace and I try to think of a goal, and it's like I don't, I'm not like, I'm not feeling it as well. Or I need to do other things. So sometimes I just write what's on my mind, you know. So I still, I do, I don't document what just happened in the day, but sometimes I have like some thoughts. Like for example, I write out, what do I want to actually do? What do I really want to do? What do I, how do I want to impact the world or how do I want to do this? Um, but back to what you were saying is like when you had the vision of like what you wanted to get done, which was like owning your own business, going back to when I was saying um, that you, you want a future pace and see it and like seeing is making it real is that if you think back of all the things you've ever done, you've probably already believed it was possible and you just kind of, you, you were visualizing, but you didn't even realize it. Right. So that's that's a pretty big, powerful thing because when I did that, when I, I think it was in Think and Grow Rich, they said, anything you've ever done, you've believed you can do it. And when I think back, I was like, man, like when I got my first dunk, it was just, I knew I can do it. I was just like, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna stop till I do it. I'm gonna do it. And it was just like, in, and then there was also times I was like, I don't know if I can do that. And it took me a while to do it. And it really took the belief first to be able to do it. Right, right. No, that's awesome, man. But so kind of jumping to another topic here, I know yeah. you um, you have quite a bit of different things going on. Like I've mentioned earlier, you have your life coaching that you're getting into now. Uh, you do some um, marketing on the side with some editing, right, um, as well as training, hardcore, and working the nine-to-five job. So how do you stay focused because you have so many different tasks, I think. And so how do you allocate your time? Like, is do you have a right. schedule? Like, how? What's um, the pattern yeah. on that? <laughs> okay, so I'm terrible with schedules. I'm terrible at making a, like, uh, like for example, today I knew we had this around nine. Um, that's like my only schedule. The rest is kind of go with the flow. But I do have like a general theme of like I wanna today I, I my gym is like I have like a priority like my gym and making sure I get to the gym and have a good gym stash is the most important and that's actually been my hardest thing actually is scheduling and doing all the things I do because I do too many things but one thing um that's helped me figure out what I want to do is constantly keep building that clarity and that's kind of how I got to life coaching number one but also took a lot of time so all these things I do when it's dunking podcasting you have to constantly try to think the big picture which is what is great about the future pacing as well because when you go to future pacing, it's like what do I want to be like in a year right or what do I want to be like in two years you really think about that and be like, you know what, I really want to be doing this, right? So then it brings it down like, okay, so when today I worked on, say I wanted to do something that's not that t- for the big picture, but something I enjoy, be like, maybe I don't have time for that today. For example, like dancing. I like to dance and learn how to dance, but that's not going to get my goals in a year. So it's like that future pacing helps, but also I just have, cl- I've been working on learning what I actually want to do, what would be my ultimate life, and that clarity when you think full big picture and write it out and, and practice it over and over again. It's not just like one day you're going to land on what you want to do. It's just thinking about the, your future and really what – get to know yourself is the, is the hardest part. It's like really know what's core to you. And when you when you get down to the core of what makes you – gives you that energy and makes you happy, then it will trickle down and then you'll be able to figure out what you want to focus on for every day. That's awesome. And, and- – like getting to know yourself seems like an, an easy like an easy question sometimes. I know. But that was probably one of the hardest hardest thing hardest things for me to understand. And yeah. And to be quite honest, I I don't know that I I know myself a hundred percent. I mean, I have this conversation with some people all the time, and it's like, I you know today I want to do this, but like in a year from today, 
it could it could change and you know i see myself being this one person today but like you know sometimes i just my mind is always like shifting in different directions and um something that i realized that really helped me and, and some people i think argue against that pattern like that thought is i kind of started writing down things that i don't like doing because mm -hmm. i couldn't figure out what i want what i like doing so i just started putting down things that i don't like doing and then that kind of helped me understand what i actually enjoy doing and spending my time on and then kind of started leading me to like okay like who's the person that i want to be and like who who how do i have to change to become that person and uh I don't know it's it's an interesting concept um so who 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 is the person that you want to be right or let me let me ask you this because I have sure. a pretty I think I have a pretty good question um so in 10 years from today right so today 10 years from now yeah you wake up just like 36. you did today and um how so how old are you going to be then 36 36 so you wake up and so what what's your vision for for that like <sighs> Yeah. What are you doing? So where do you live? What do you work? What do right. you do? So um, first off, I got to say, I, I really like that you said you're still learning about yourself because I still feel like I'm learning about myself. But I, at, when I talk to anybody, that's kind of how this whole journey started for me is because I'm going to get deep for a second, which is when I was a kid, like I was saying, I was short and I was like outgoing or whatever. A lot of myself was suppressed because when I got to middle school and high school, I was still that weird kid, made people laugh. But then my friends that were my close friends were sort of judging me. Like for example, if I talked to another kid that they didn't weren't in the popular group, they didn't want to associate with me because I was associating with him. And it was really hard at that age when you're young, when you're in middle school and high school, because I lost those friends. They didn't want to hang out with me. So I was I was very conflicted with do I want to be myself and talk to these other kids, or do I wanna not be myself and keep my friends? And so that was a very hard decision but I, I chose to be myself but I was also just I was confused for a while luckily I had some other good friends that would stick by my weirdness yeah. and um, I, I met you in college too and you could tell I was kind of super like weird. just loved being myself and doing crazy things screaming yeah. all the time like live, whatever it is um, but the point is is I didn't know myself I didn't I, I didn't trust to be myself and that's kind of why I'm on this mission now to help people be themselves because I'm glad I stuck to who I was and now I'm happier than I ever was because I realized being myself and like you said doing what you want to do and learning about yourself I feel like it's everyone's path to happiness okay I'll get back to your question now so um, in 10 years from now I hope to, I really want to be in a place where um, all I'm doing is uh, being able to go exactly where my energy is. So if I woke up and I'm 36, I think by then I'd want like a family too, like a wife and kids probably. Um, but wake up, be able to Yo, heard that. not have a strict wake up. What's up? <laughs> it's like, it's recorded, man. So, yeah, I know. You know. <laughs> it's fine. Um what's it called so wake up i would love to just wake up naturally early like with the sun that's like a huge thing for me to be going to sleep with the sun wake up with the sun i would love to be on the beach so i wake up with the sounds of the ocean i love that a lot definitely in like a warm climate i think about that a lot wake up do a meditation i would love to be a person that does a morning meditation uh, right now i try to do five minutes but i barely get it in in the mornings it's i have so much energy it's hard to sit back and, and focus but i just try to at least think about my breath a little bit when I woke up, wake up right. instead of looking at freaking Instagram first. <laughs> but um, so like, a, like a, a meditation practice and then my day would just consist of getting some sun. I would love to help some people in a life coaching aspect, whether it's a client or even have like a talk or a podcast. I would love to right. continue having some kind of expressive outlet where I keep sharing what I'm learning and learning what other people are sharing too. I just love that interaction. Um move my body, like go to the gym, hopefully still be athletic and still be able to do something I love to do in that way. Um, and I would love to just be with friends and family, like maybe have some new experiences where either we just have like a new day where we just hang out together or some kind of trip where I get to go see a friend or meet a friend for lunch or maybe I have a travel coming up that I love to do. Um, and even stand up comedy, maybe another, like towards the end of the night, go up on stage and just have some fun making people laugh. Oh, man, it's just, it's just um, being free you'd to do whatever so, I want. You'd be so good at it, man. I Thank really, you. I really, really hope I'm going to, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. You, you do that because I will buy, um, tickets for that. <laughs> It'd be for so sure, crazy, right? Sure. Just but, like, yeah. 
You know, you know what's cool about what you just said, though, because I feel like a lot of people would say that in 10 years from now, they hope to have this much money and have, you know, this nice, like all this nice stuff and be able to, you know, travel the, the world or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, it feels like you, you're really just focusing on the experience that you can have in 10 years from now and um, who you can hang out with and yeah. like just, and, and it comes down to kind of like, what I tell people all the time, and it's very cheesy, but like my main goal in life is to have freedom. Yes. Right? I, so like, I yeah. think money is very important. Don't get me wrong. I would love yeah. to have money as well, right? But if I can have freedom, I know I'm going to be a happier person. And I know yes. that when you're happy, you're not too worried about money and, and things just work out. And, and I think we have, we share the same interests. Yeah. So the thing about freedom, like you said, like I didn't mention money, but, and, um, but of course money matters, but like the thought of, I feel like money is just like the what funds these different things but obviously I want that money to lead to that freedom so it's like I, I don't it doesn't really matter the amount if, if it allows me that freedom if I'm able to do those things I just said and money comes from those activities that's the dream that's literally the dream if I'm like if I wake up and like my podcast I make makes me money or the stand-up comedy I make makes me money or the like if I'm, st I'm still doing YouTube, whatever, all those different things that I mentioned, life coaching, all those different things, making a speak, if those, a speech, if I, uh, if those make me money and I could spend, and I'm still, uh, all those different things I love and somehow the money's coming in to fund travel and fund my free time to be able to do what I want, that is the dream. So I didn't mention money, but it's definitely in there. Like I hope those things are making right. me money. So that's all I have, I, I can do all day is just those things I enjoy because that's literally the dream life. Yeah, man. Of course, and I know, I know. We get there. It's just uh, yeah. we got we got to be patient, man. It takes time, and um, but I think that having the right mindset, um, you know, will, will help help us get there. And having like a defined plan, and going back to that vision, visualizing like what we want to do, where we want to be. Uh, I hope that in ten years from now, we'll watch this video and be like, "Dang, man! Like, you know, it's super exciting. Like, look where we're at now, and what we were talking about then." So it'd be crazy. That's, um, you mentioned patience. I actually just want to touch on that because that's actually one of the things I learned this week that I, I'm bad at is oh. having that patience because I have so much energy, as you know, yeah. but it's like I was having trouble sleeping because I would try. That's what, why I brought up the visualization to my coach is because I was trying to visualize, trying to do the most. And then when I was going to sleep, there's different states you're in. Like, for example, sometimes you have an, you're have anxiety, right? But then to I'm learning this in the life coaching. But then to get rid of that, sometimes you just need to get things done. Like you need to be, okay, why am I anxious? It's because I didn't get groceries. I didn't do my errands today. So you go do those errands. And then when you do them, now you can calm down a little bit. And now you're calm. And then you feel the sense of accomplishment. And then the next stage of that is like a meditative state where you can completely let go of, the, of like today. So I was having trouble. And from the life coaching training, I realized that when I was going to sleep, even though I would journal and things like that, I wasn't feeling accomplished. And I was like, I'm trying to journal and get my thoughts out. But it was just that letting go. I need to realize that I can't do everything tonight and have that patience of tomorrow's another day but it's that patience is really tough because I just feel like the more I do the more I can get done but you have to remember that at some point you have to detach so you can come back and that sleep is, is so important dude absolutely and that is something that I struggle with as well um, constantly thinking about like what's next and like how, how can I get there um, and it's and you know I'm just not patient enough and it's hard because I gotta you know make myself think about it like all right leo like calm down like <laughs> there's only so much you can do yeah. and so so fast you can move um a lot to me happens like during business so like you know the the entire process of opening the restaurant that was like what i really really lived for i loved that part it was just very challenging complicated i didn't know what to expect the day after and once i opened the restaurant it's like all right what's next and um I just had to stop and realize like, all right, like I have this thing going on now. I have to focus here first before I can like jump to something else. Right. And just keeping myself in the moment. Right. Exactly. In the moment. In, in the, the moment. moment. So that's what I've learned with the sleeping is like now when I go to sleep, it's not like, okay, try to forget about that. It's not, I'm not saying like try to let go of doing your to do's, trying to write things down. I instead, I'm thinking, okay, be in the moment. Let's just, I get to enjoy this sleep. I get to go into dreamland. I get to just fully indulge in this relaxation state. And I think that's, that's what switched is like, 
instead of being patient of like thinking, okay, that's okay, I can put it off and be patient, it's like just refocusing on the exact moment. So now everything I do, um, I just fully focus on the moment. And the, it's it's a tough practice. It's like that book, Live in the Now, I think it's by Eckhart Tolle. I think it's called Live in the Now. I know it's by him, Eckhart Tolle. Have you heard mm-hmm. of it? Yeah, no, I've heard of him, but I haven't read the book yet. Live in, I think it's called, oh, no, or The Power of Now. It's something now, you'll find it, Eckhart Tolle. It's really good. I've read it, but that practice of being in the now is so, I'm starting to finally feel it because every moment feels better. Like, for example, this morning when I made coffee, I just really loved making it because I get to have that whole morning experience when you're waking up and my I feel fresh. And now it's like I'm in this podcast and I get to just fully engage in this conversation it's a it's like one of my favorite podcasts i've ever done so far and it's funny because i was trying to do a podcast last night and i was feeling like i wanted to talk about all these things but i i was gonna post it but i didn't feel i was gonna record it i mean but i i didn't feel it that well and i was like i need to get to sleep and there was just other things i had to do so i'm glad i waited because now i'm getting all the things i wanted to get out with you and it's just come and it's coming out so much better and so much more fresh. So it's like that patience paid off again. And so every time you, you do the patience and you're able to practice living in the now, you start to feel it a little bit more. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely true. I actually, every now and then when I'm on vacation, I catch myself like thinking about work and stuff yes. and it's, and, and sometimes I got it like, I stop and I'm like, man, like I don't go on vacation that often. What? Yeah. And I'm always at work. So yeah. <laughs> why not just like stop worrying about it? Because that's it's another tough. thing that I'm, that's another mindset that I'm trying to have is like, listen, if something happens, you can't fix, like you can only fix going forward, but like mm-hmm. whatever happened in the past, you can't worry about it. So like mm-hmm. if I'm worrying about things not going right at work when I'm there, you know, Okay. It doesn't help me, right? Okay, yeah. So that's where I think the practice of the visualization is really powerful. So in that moment right there, what I'm trying to do for my practice, which has helped me a lot, is like when you have that thought be like, and you catch yourself and you're like, oh, I'm thinking of the past. Think of the future. Be like, oh, I'm on this great vacation. When I get back to work or maybe my next vacation, whatever it is, you'll be like, everything's going to be great. Like, for example, say you had – this is not relevant to us, but maybe it's a little bit good of an analogy. Say you have like a test on – on a tu- on next Tuesday, right? Sure. And you're thinking, to, oh, I got to study. It's stressful, you know. Instead of thinking about what you have to do, even though we just said be in the moment, think about like just visualize for a second turning in that test or completing it and getting a grade like of an of an A. And you're like, wow, I really got an A on that. It feels so good. It's because I studied so well. I was accomplished by doing that visualization and like seeing yourself in that moment receiving that A grade. It literally you, your brain doesn't know the difference of a real experience or a thought an experience that you're having in a thought. Your brain chemistry and your neurological responses and stuff and your physiology will change either way. So if you're visualizing yourself achieving that grade and having that gratitude it'll fill you right into this moment now so like for example when you're on that vacation or maybe you're at work and you're stressing out you could be like oh i'm going to be on vacation next week or i'm going to get this order done like for example you have a huge order if you get it done and you visualize yourself getting it done it'll change your state now to be in that state of as, as if you achieved it so then you could operate at that level of gratitude so then as you're in the now You're operating at the level of gratitude. So every interaction you have with people, you have that sense of like, wow, this is so great because you thought of the, it's just, it comes back to now. Yeah. And And I love that. This, this visual visualization topic could go on for hours. Uh, I think it's, (laughs) sorry. It's no, no, no. It's, it's something that I'm truly passionate about too, because I didn't really know about this until I really uh, read think and grow rich and like Mm -hmm. everything just. Dude, you got to read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. There's more. There's like I'll science the behind list. it. Yeah. Because th- the reason I'm so passionate about it now too is because I'm learning about that and I'm reading other books and there's like more science behind it than just the – um, like like Thinking Grow, which was kind of just a little like uh, spacey. I don't know how to explain it. They kind right. of explain the topics and they're the same. But there's more science to it like with your actual brain chemistry. Yeah. And so – for me, when I learn about like the actual science and how when I think of like and I actually see that experience and like someone tells me that your mind doesn't know the difference of like something that's happening now or something you're visualizing, that to me is more powerful than someone saying just go visualize it. it, it it's like it's more concrete mm-hmm. and it makes it it makes it more real because I can f- I can feel those emotions. Like for example, this is a good example. If you think about soccer, right? And you think of like a sick moment, like for example, like you've been practicing a move and you visualize yourself pulling it off in game and you fucking hit the goal and you and you make a goal and it was like really exciting. You won the championship, right? If right. you really visualize that, sit and close your eyes, you your palms might get sweaty, you know, like you might. Dude, 
it's you might funny. get height. You mentioned that because I kid you not in high school, like one of those probably like my best goals ever. Um, and for those who play with me, the sickles game, uh, I kid you not before the, before the goal actually happened, like literally five minutes, like five, 10 seconds before I got the ball, I thought, I thought, dude, I'm going to get the ball right now. I'm going to score. Yeah. And I did. And it's, and it, I just had that yeah. in my mind and, and it was like chills. the sickest goal ever. And, it, yeah. and I think we tied a game where I went up one, we went up one, one of the other, I can remember, but it was just like having that confidence and having that like visualization and you know, it, it happened and it was just like so rewarding, man. It was crazy. Yes. So that's, so that, that's awesome. That's a perfect example that shows you that like you had that like belief for a second and you fully believed it and saw it already and it happened. And then just, just like, so the thing is, is like if you think about doing that again in the future or something that's really exciting to you, it changes your body. Like we can have, we can both have visualizations right now of like something that'll make us sweat or make us feel like good. So those emotions are real. They're not just like fake, right. you know? So it's like that when someone like, when I learned that, like I I knew that, but I didn't really think to use it to my advantage. You know, it goes back to like that placebo effect. Like if yeah. it works, it works. <laughs> and I'm sure. like, someone mentioned this. I think it was on a Joe Rogan podcast. They were saying, yeah, it was Joe Rogan. But I forget who he was with. If you look up placebo effect, you'll probably find it. But um, he said this. He was like, the placebo effect works. Like we all know, we've all heard of it. Like someone takes a placebo pill and their illness goes away or their whatever it was. Right. Even some things that you would never think like a full rash or something or a real illness. Some people can, because they thought they took, it, it works. Because they thought it was a fucking cure, there, something was treated. So if we know that that's possible, like that's 100% real. Why can't we try to use it to our advantage instead of just like yeah. using it after there's an illness? Why not use it like, okay, if that's real, why, why can't we use it to try to trick ourselves in a right. positive direction? Yeah, man. I love that. <laughs> so for, dude, hold on. My dog's about to bark like crazy. No Jim, problem. Calm down, buddy. It's just a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> calm down, bud. Um, Episode so, three with Juno? Huh? Episode three, get Juno on the mic? Yeah, dude. He's, he's, a, little, he's a little anxious right now. Calm down, bud. You can't go through the wall. Um, but anyways, getting back to, so what I think this community and the people that listen to that hopefully will be listening to this, a lot of people have a certain goal or dream that they wish to accomplish. Um, and I know we're hitting on things like visualization and like journaling. What is your number one advice for someone who, who really wants to do something that's like a life changing moment? Like it was for me, like changing jobs, going to being a business owner and like you getting your first dunk after practicing for so long. What's your number one advice for, um, for someone who has that, that wants to change, but it's kind of stuck. Great question. Okay. First thing I would say is think about the exact reason you want to do it. Like whatever it is, make sure it's for you. Cause a lot of times I, even myself, I've had goals of, um, Stand up comedy is a good one. Like for example, I want to be I want to be a stand up comic or do stand up comedy. And there was a part of me that wanted to just do it because I want to be known as the funny person, almost mm -hmm. like my ego, right? Right. But now uh, I still want to do it just because I love that energy. But it's a totally different mindset. I'm not doing it just to be known, and I'm not trying to do it for that reason. But so that was a okay example. But there's sometimes people are only doing it for that reason. They don't right. realize that they're doing it for external reasons. Just So my first thing is just make sure it's truly what you want to do. Be honest with yourself. Don't have any judgment, but make sure you're doing things because they're true to you and it's just what a core value of what you want to do. And then when you do that, just map out everything about it. And I would just say, don't just map out what you want to do and then think about what you can do right now. Don't worry about like what the end goal is. It could be the biggest goal. There was just a um, a post today by Tom Bilyeu. Do you know that guy? He's the creator of Quest. He's like, the, he has the Impact Theory podcast. I've heard him on a different podcast. Right. Yes, with, yeah. So he just posted something on Instagram about moonshot, like post your moonshot, like think about what your moon goal is, meaning like your ultimate goal that you want to achieve because those people that think about that achieve it more than the people that don't. So the point is shoot for anything. Don't limit yourself, but then just think about what you can do right now. Don't don't get overwhelmed by how far you are. Just think about what you now, what you can do now and be grateful that you can just make little progress right now. And I would just say take one little step at a time. Don't and then 
and don't worry if you make a mistake. For example, if I'm trying to do stand-up comedy and I fucking miss a class, like I, there was a perfect class I can go to next week and I forgot to sign up and I'm going to have to wait six months. Don't be hard on yourself. Just think of it as like what I can do next. It's okay. Just keep making progress in every little step you can. Don't try to do everything all at once. Just be happy with the little bit of progress you can make now. Gotcha. And and, and that's all good feedback. But a lot of it is like stay motivated, right? And and stay yes. on track. So what what do you do to stay to stay motivated and keep going even when things don't seem to be working out as, as okay. great? So like I said at the beginning with the nutrition and the sleep, sometimes I'll be negative. Like I'll I'll find my time find myself negative and for example if i even if i had a good day at the gym and i i completed what my goals were like say i, I did something whatever it was and I'll, I'll be like why am i doing this is this even what i want and sometimes i think negative like that and when i really kind of take a, account of how i'm doing a lot of times if i'm thinking neg- negative it's because i've had a really bad sleep recently and i'm like overly tired or i had really i've been eating poorly and just all my like foundational things are not in line. So the first thing I say for motivation is do the f- the fundamentals first. So make sure you're getting good sleep, eating right, and moving right because if you if you can't do those things, then you're you're just you're not even doing the baseline. So I would say start with just treating your body right and with motivation, if you're doing something that you're aligned with, which was like kind of the first thing I, th- I said, is that that motivation is going to come from such a deep place right. that I don't. It's gonna it's gonna fuel you so much more, and that's why it's so important to know yourself. Going back, we're coming full circle. Is like yeah. when you know yourself that well, and your goal is really aligned with what you want to do, it's going to fuel you fuel you so much. It sounds so weird when I say fuel you when it's going to fuel you from such a deep place that. No matter the ups and downs, you're always going to want to do it because that's who you are. It's basically just being your best self. And that's yeah. it's hard to explain because I know you want like motivation techniques, but I just feel like if you're going towards what you want to do, you're it's going to be you're going to find that motivation to do it. Yeah, it's just, just finding yourself and finding your passion is, is a yeah. way to to get motivated. I mean, I know with me is once I discovered what my passion was, which it, it, uh, it was entrepreneurship. And then I started listening to podcasts about entrepreneurship and books about entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. and I didn't stop until I could accom- like, you know accomplish what what I've yes. what I did, and and I mean I still li- listen and read to all of those things because it keeps me moving, it keeps my brain thinking, and it keeps me motivated and wanting more. Um, so I think that's that's extremely important. Either um, you got to know yourself, you got to find out what you're good at, and uh, and then you got to find something that just. You know, even even when you're doing your worst time, that's that it's gonna keep you motivated. So, I think those are all uh, valid points. Um, Another, yeah. No, go for it. Uh, the other thing I was gonna say is that, like for me, I like to do a podcast. I like to make YouTube videos. I like to train. Um, the reason I like to do all these things is because of that motivation. Because when I listen to podcasts, like you were saying, when I listen to podcasts, it inspires me. And when I watch like a video on YouTube that's like very high quality and someone's vlogging and they give information, it inspires me to have that energy. So now, because I'm getting inspired by all these different platforms, that inspires me and motivates me to contribute, to share more. So if you want to do something watch other people doing it and and I think that that's a big part of it. For example, if I if I listen to a good podcast on the way home and someone was like really inspirational and they said something, it makes me want to get on the mic and share. But that's just that's I love sharing. So if you're trying to do something and you're a little down on the motivation, watch, try to watch something, consume something, or even just enjoy. Because when you enjoy and you're happy, it puts you in that mood to do what you love. You know, you just gotta follow that energy, is what I usually say. Yeah, I guess I guess that, that yeah, that's that's a good thing. I mean, I guess the uh, the main source of motivation is just to watch someone else do it. Mm-hmm. Um, or you know, if if you want to be a great football player, watch the your favorite football player, um, and just you know, don't I guess don't give up until you achieve it. Yes, and another thing on that. So f- the thing about it too is that you can't judge yourself, and you also need a break. Like for example, like sometimes you want say you're a musician and you want to make a song. I had a friend that wanted to make music, right? He wanted to like complete a, a song by Sunday, right? And he was trying so hard, trying so hard. And then when I talked to him on Sunday, he was like, 
man, Friday and Saturday, I just couldn't, I couldn't write anything. I had no, I had nothing. I had like no passion behind it. And I, I just felt like he burnt himself out. You know, he spent Monday, Tuesday, he was so motivated, but then he's trying to continue that. You know, sometimes you need to step away. And when you step away and you're not, that's where the patient comes back, patience comes back is that when you step away from what you're doing, it's not that you're not, you're not motivated to do it. It's that you need a break just like anything else. Every, if you go to the gym and you want to work out and be fit you can't do it 24 7 you have to rest you have to recover and i think anything you do has that same up and down podcasting any type of thing you ever do you need to take a little bit of break to regain some and recover and rest gotcha. that's another big factor in the motivation yeah so trying to wrap things up here i think we talked about a lot of yeah. uh, great it's, there's like great content great information here um but i think a lot of people have to take a certain risk in order to achieve greatness, right? Mm. And a lot of people have to make the, the choice to um, to take that risk. For you, what has been uh, the greatest or the hardest thing, risk, that you've taken? And and how did you deal with that those emotions? Yeah, so I haven't taken too big of a risk now that's... Uh that's like crazy risky or anything i think i might be doing that soon because right now i'm in the corporate job as you know i might be trying to uh get out of that but i'm still trying to mitigate that risk i think the risk i'm doing right now was me finding myself because i like doing my whole youtube and doing all these different things i barely did anything else for a while and i still don't like there's times where um I had to, I I don't go out anymore. Like after college, I stopped going out. I was in my house a lot. I would I have I'd go to work nine to five, go to the gym, come home and edit, go to sleep, same thing every day. And so I was barely going out. I was barely doing things. Um, and uh, luckily, like a lot of my things, I reached out to my friends and like kept in contact with them. But I think the risk was kind of missing out on a lot of opportunities. But when I think about that, it's not a risk to me because it's what I want to do. Right. But it's as more of a sacrifice, I guess. Um, if I think of a risk, I so mean, I sacrificed a lot. That sounds like a big risk. Not a risk, but like you're saying, a sacrifice. Oh, it's a risk too, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't get to live these experiences going mm -hmm. forward, right? So you're yeah. kind of putting away some of the things that a lot of people our age do because you're mm -hmm. just so focused into putting all your effort into you know, your, your YouTube account and these other things that... Um, you know, it's, but like you said, uh, one of the biggest things for me is to kind of try to live a life with barely any regrets, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess for you, I, I doubt that you're going to look back at it and be like, man, I shouldn't have done so many of those YouTube videos because I didn't get to spend time with my friends in this now. Like, yeah, yeah I don't so think that's going to happen. I do have a risk for you. So right now I'm in the IT world. It's a great career. And me doing this um, risk is that risks that career. Like I could easily just put all my energy into that career. Obviously, it's not really my passion, but I could put all my energy into that career and have a great career, great life, make great money, and have a great have a great life. But uh, I'm sort of risking that because I'm not putting my energy into that, and it's just I think that's the biz biggest biggest risk if I think about it because. Um, there's no there's no guarantee that this will work out. Uh, I want it to, and I, sure. I where I think, and I, since I've learned all these different things, and I think about how how the world is so, and the it's just everything is just we barely know what's going on. My podcast is called Still Spinning because the world is just spinning around. That that makes me more able to take that risk because I'm like I rather do this and fail and then figure it out from there. I guess. Right then have the stability of my IT job that it's that I'm not passionate about and yeah, that's, there you go. that's the biggest risk that yeah, for sure because like like you said if you were 100% focused at work I'm sure you'd be taking on more tasks and mm -hmm. asking your boss how you can do better and how you can get to a certain level and right now even though that would take you probably like you know to a path that you'd be very stable like you mentioned and have a good money and good 401k and all that stuff it's not it's not what you want so mm -hmm. you, you know taking that risk to invest into something else yeah I, I completely get it it was very similar to my transition yeah. um so my final question here is um if you had and obviously like you, you just got to imagine this right so Love it. if the entire world stopped at this second to listen to you and you Oof. had a 1 to 2 minute speech or whatever um, to motivate 
these people or to just whatever your message is, Oof. whatever your core belief is or whatever it is, what would your what would you say to these people? Wow. Okay. Great question. So I think about that a lot. Not that exact question, but I think about um the world a lot and like what's going on and like what we don't know why we're here my whole thing like i said still spinning room is like kind of like why what we're not we don't know why we're here i don't know what people's religious beliefs are if i were to talk to everybody in the world i would say we're all here together and we don't know for sure why and we don't know exactly how either we just we kind of i mean evolution but we don't know how we got here why we're here And I think to myself, what's the best way to live while we're here? And I think is the best way we can live is if everybody realizes that we're in this together and that the best way to to experience this is to just make it as enjoyable as possible. And that's why I'm chasing what I'm chasing because I enjoy it so much. And we don't even know why we're here and we don't even know how long we have. And um, I think... We should just be super grateful that we get to have any experience that we have. And I would just say, try to be grateful and enjoy as much as you can. And I think the best way to do that is just be true to yourself, be who you are to the max, and do what you enjoy and really understand that you're super unique. You're, you have, you're born with a certain amount of DNA and you have your experiences, your that you live through so your nature and your nurture so if you learn about yourself um think of yourself as that unique because no one's ever going to have your combination of your nature and your nurture and just enjoy and what when you enjoy yourself it makes the world a better place because you're going to produce whatever you produce whether it's content whether it's some kind of service or whatever it is you being the biggest you is what makes this uh experience most enjoyable for you and the people around you spread love love that man i (laughs) I love that message and i hope the entire world gets to listen to this one day man that was good i've never been asked that that was like the greatest question this is this whole podcast has been like the best uh outlet like i haven't had i guess i haven't had somebody talk to me about this stuff in a while so this has been amazing so i really appreciate it when you go back and listen to what you just said man it, it truly me being your friend for a while it truly defines um, the person you are because I feel like everything you do is after fulfillment and being happy and um, and having this positive energy and being able to share the ener- this energy that you have with people around you and exactly what you just said kind of describes mm-hmm. the person you are so you nailed it <sighs> man um, it, it feels good like this energy I feel right now is exactly what I want to feel more of and I want more people to enjoy hell yeah now you gotta go hit the gym and get <laughs> get stuff, ac- stuff accomplished and I know like like I'm sure you feel it too. Is like now it's like we had this great conversation. We want other people to hear it. You know that's like yeah. why we're we're not doing it for any other reason. I feel like that enjoyment is so. That's all we can do is enjoy. We don't know anything else to do. Uh, I can talk forever. For sure, my man. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate your time, brother. I know you have a big priority, like you mentioned earlier. Go hit the gym. <laughs> um, make sure you have a healthy breakfast. Will and do. I'll Passing. see you later, brother. Thank you so much. Dude, thank you so much, Leo. I had a great time. Best of luck with everything, man. All right, brother. Have a good one. See you later.